Okay. Yep. Interesting. Like hey everyone, it's Andrew Brown, and welcome to the Terraform Cloud Project Bootcamp Beginner Edition. And we are on week one because I started. Uh, I started the weeks at zero. I said I would not do that again in the last bootcamp. I lied. I started at weeks zero. Um, but it's working out okay because there are fewer weeks. I think it's easier to manage that zero there. Um, but yeah, hopefully everyone is excited uh, for this week. I'm going to get into our sponsors here, and then we will jump in uh, to the normal content. We'll talk about what we're doing in today's live stream. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, before we do this, make sure you have your AWS account open and ready because we're going to be doing step-by-step uh, -step live instruction within it, the AWS console. So uh, get that open as soon as you can, okay? Um, so let's thank our sponsors. I want to thank Adrian Cantrell, who is a returning sponsor from our last boot camp. Uh, and if you do not know Adrian, Adrian produces AWS certification study courses. I shouldn't say just these because I know that uh, he made a Docker course and a few other ones. And I think and those ones are free. They're like fundamental courses. And you might want to go check them out. Um, so I think he's exhausted AWS and might be expanding into other areas. But um, I also want to point out that Adrian has free mini projects. So just like in this bootcamp, how we're kind of doing a mini project. If you're looking for other mini projects, um, these ones aren't built in Terraform. But that's a great opportunity for you to go apply your Terraform knowledge that you learn here to make sure that you uh, know what you're doing here. and. Um, yeah, there. I'd like to ha thank HashiCorp. Uh, if HashiCorp was not uh, sponsoring this bootcamp, this would not be happening because it's just very hard to uh, run these bootcamps. They're really, <laughs> really expensive for me, <laughs> not for you, but for me. And you know, greatly appreciate HashiCorp. I really wanted to do a Terraform uh, a bootcamp, and so that's the primary reason why we're able to do it. HashiCorp has also provided us swag. And so, uh, you know, for those who are participating, even in the free tier, as long as you're registered, <clears throat> and you can see Chris is um, showcasing, I'm modeling, uh, showcasing of, modeling some of the swag. <laughs> modeling some of the swag. That's a HashiCorp shirt, but do, do, are, do we get HashiCorp shirts? Or just Terraform shirts. Um, wh whatever's in the in the bin, we're gonna we're gonna figure it's it out. Whatever in the bin. So whatever in That's the right. bin is what you get. I hope you like uh, Vault and Vaults. I like the Vault logo. But, no, um, it'll be Terraform and HashiCorp t-shirts. Okay. <laughs> so, so we have our Terraform shirts and vouchers. Uh, those get issued out uh, randomly. I think we said uh, shirts are at random for anyone that's registered. And then right. vouchers are at random for anyone that completes uh, that, like to the completion that you can do to, right? So those Correct. are the two that are there, right? So just get all your stars, the maximum stars that you're able to based on the tier that you're in, because certain tiers will have a different level of stars. Uh, if folks are asking how to register, it's at the terraform.cloudprojectbootcamp.com. By the way, uh, we didn't close registration be because we're finding that the administration is going very well. And so it's still mm -hmm. open for a while. It's not going to stay open for forever, but um, uh, this would probably this might be the last day we'll leave registration open. I'll, I'll have to talk to Baco about it, but uh, let's get in. But you'll have to do some work to catch up. Consult the Baco. Uh, and I know we talked about this in the last live stream, but I just want to point out that Hashi, Hashi, uh, HashiCorp has three events per year. Uh, there's the Hashi Talks, Hashi Days, and HashiConf. HashiConf is coming up in October, so I would recommend or suggest uh, you register now. I think there's it's free to register right online if if you're remote. Correct. And, free to register and online. Is, there, there's sure. a there's a fee if you want to show up locally, of course, for the for the uh, conference pass and everything. And if you are there locally. Um, if, if you get the conference pass and attend locally in San Francisco, you can also then register for yet another voucher. Um, you get a voucher with the cost of the conference. So you can take the test on site as well, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so if you are there in San Francisco on October 10th through the 12th, feel free to ping me. Uh, I'd love to meet up with some of the, the bootcamp students. Um, it, would be, it would be super fun for us to get a group photo for anybody that is at HashiConf. And, and you can get some rice aroni with Chris. Is that where rice aroni is from? Is it from San Francisco? It is the San Francisco treat. Okay. Well, there you go. So, and you know, these online conferences are great because a lot of times you get even the online ones for because uh, I remember doing one uh, uh, or participating. I think it was last year or the last the last HashiConf one. It was so great to be able to interact with people online. They do mm. such a great job with those online uh, 
conferences. So definitely check it out. Um, and, you know, of course, if you can join a Hugs that is near you, it's a great way to uh, build out your network and to uh, find more peers. Because when this cohort's o over, you might want to keep connected with other folks. Uh, and so this is a suggestion uh, for you. You can go to meetup.com forward slash pro forward slash hugs to find a hug that's near you. And if there isn't a hug near you, you might be able to host your own. So that's Absolutely. a great way to uh, stand out uh, if you are trying to do that. I'd like to thank We Cloud Data. We Cloud Data is also a returning sponsor and uh, I've, they've helped us a considerable amount. So um, I really want to thank them for that. They are a private school in Toronto. Um, they're accredited, so that means they have the blessing from the government to do a very good job. And so anything with them, you know, they're going to do a really good job with. I'll probably end up showing next week um, their upcoming boot camp. They have a DevOps forward slash cloud engineer boot camp that is, I think it's six months. It's very thorough. Uh, I'd like to uh, talk about that at some point here. But um, I want to point out that they have free videos on YouTube as well. They have a Terraform video. Uh, some of their videos are DevOps focused. Some of them are data focused. So uh, even though we're learning Terraform here, you might go there and they'll give you a different perspective from a different angle. And that might be something uh, you may be interested in. It's great to uh, utilize multiple sources to get a full round picture of stuff. So check that out and tell me what you think. They also have a few couple of open courses. So if you need to learn Python SQL, which is basic cloud programming, fundamental cloud programming uh, knowledge, I think everyone should have, uh, go check that stuff out. Uh, there. So we're through with the, wait, 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 wait. I'm a sponsor. <laughs> I always forget to talk about myself. I, uh, I'm a sponsor. We're a sponsor. Baco and I are a sponsor. Exampro.co. You probably already know what it is now because you're on the platform. We create certification courses. Uh, they're free and then they're layered with uh, um, a paid material that also helps support the production of these uh, 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 videos. They generally almost always go on free code camp because we want to make sure we're getting educational content as accessible as possible out there. Uh, do I have a slide after this? I do. Yeah. And so, um, you know, as I was saying, uh, most of our videos are first published to free code camp, but they're also on our platform. You're probably getting an idea if you're registered, how that works. And we layer it with a bunch of stuff. So like study notes, flashcards, quizlets, lecture slides, cheat sheets, practice exams, et cetera, et cetera. You got it. So hopefully that makes sense there. And we will move on uh, to the boot camp. I did want to talk about um, uh, Git workflow because I think I, I was, a, I would say I, I found it very interesting that a lot of people found value or it was the first time people were experiencing a Git workflow. And uh, uh, one of our boot campers had uh, made a visual uh, to best describe uh, that flow. And I thought we could spend a little bit of time talking about that before we jump into uh, the uh, AWS console here. And I think that's next. Oh, I forgot about <laughs> I forgot about our, our cloud security duo uh, before we talk about the other thing. And actually, I was talking to Sheesh yesterday. And so we got videos coming out. So I think I will be releasing a security video this week by uh, Ashish and Shalib. So look forward to that. But yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. So <clears throat> uh, John produced this. And it basically describes the the flow of what we're doing, which is we're doing issues, we're doing branching, we're doing merging and, and verification. I'm promoting this here in the announcements in the Discord, but uh, this basically gives you kind of an idea of the flow that we're working in. I just wanna point out that this is the flow that we are using for our bootcamp. And so for some teams and projects, they might do it differently based on how they wanna automate, whether they wanna have a manual check and things like that. But for the most part, broadly speaking, this is something that uh, is very useful for um, uh, uh, knowing when you're doing uh, development, and we are doing development uh, to to uh, a particular particular way or particular degree. And so I thought this is a great visual. I wanted to show it, but I also um, just in case it helped, I I made another visual here in uh, Lucid Charts. So I have it open somewhere here. There we go. And and so I just wanted to kind of go over it and just take a quick look at, at the flow that we're doing. If this is another visual that helps, it doesn't have as much text. So you'll have to go look at John's for a uh, diagram for that more text there. The idea is that every time we start a video, this is the flow we're doing. We're opening an issue. We label the issue. So saying what kind of issue is it? A feature, bug, what it is. We, we create our feature branch. We code in our branch. 
Then we document, then we commit our code. Hopefully we will put our sure that the stuff is associated with, with our issues, right? Update, update our issue there. Then we create our, our uh, pull request. Then we review our pull request. Now, of course, we are self-reviewing our pull requests in, uh, in an actual company. Other people would look at your pull requests, but we're just doing that because we have to. Um, it'd be too hard to review everyone's pull requests. Then we merge. I put an asterisk there because we know there's a few different ways that we can merge. Then we verify that we uh, our merge was successful in our main branch. We verify that our issue was closed. We then, because we might not necessarily always um, delete that branch. And yeah, some folks are pointing out about uh, the connection. So we use StreamYards. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm tethered. So it's not my internet connection. My internet connection is fine. But sometimes StreamYard has a few hiccups. So hopefully uh, it will get better. This is, of course, being recorded. So we can watch it uh, later on. But uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure there. But you know, ba maybe Baco, Baco, if you could just tell me how bad the lag is. But um, I th I'm thinking that, oh, it's improved now. So he says it's improving. But uh, yeah, again, it's, 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 not that, it's not that bad. We can, we oh, can okay. still get the words. Yeah. OK, great. So but um, anyway. It, and some folks might be asking where these charts are. Uh, this chart in particular, this one here, uh, has not been pushed into the Discord yet. It'll be updated in, in the portal, and I'll push it out in the um, in the, the, um, uh, the the portal. You folks can reference that when you need to. So hopefully that makes sense there. And so that was the flow. And yeah, I just see our, our feed keeps dropping out uh, a few here and there, but we'll keep working through it. It's just how it is. And uh, I wanted to also show that Terra Towns is now up. So Terra Towns, Terra Towns dot cloud is up. You cannot register as of yet uh, because you need a special code. So if you try to register and you go sign up, you will need your teacher seat user UID, which you do have access to. That's um, in your drop down in your account. So I think I have my account open here. So that's here. But you're going to need this um, access code. And so we are going to vendor out those access codes to you in the platform. But those will be coming out uh, soon enough so that you'll be set up well ahead of time to connect your Terra house or your Terra home to the Terra Towns platform. So that is really exciting. Uh, so excited to see that. Um, if you attended office hours, uh, there was some people asking, could we have more diagramming. And so I created a diagram week. So we have an exact idea what we are doing there. Uh, we have a diagram for week one build. And then we have a diagram for uh, week two uh, connect, which is the whole scope of our project. Because of course, week three is our catch up week. But just understand that um, these diagrams are going to just keep you to fine tune them. So hopefully that will be good there. So. Hopefully that is uh, OK. And yeah, again, I realize the stream is a bit choppy, but there's nothing I can do about it. So we'll just have to work through it. But anyway, uh, what I want to do today is I want to show show folks what we're building out in AWS uh, by doing it with ClickOps. So the idea is that um, I realized that in week one, we're going to be jumping into Terraform. And some, some, uh, some here might not be familiar with the AWS console. Uh, it is a prereq, but um, I figured that and this, I think I do this a lot, actually. Before I usually build something in Terraform or CloudFormation, if I'm not super familiar with it, I'll do click ops first. And that will give me like a visual um, um, model to understand what it is that I'm building, um, even, even though I'm going to end up doing it using IAC. So uh, Chris and Shala, what's your experience? Do you ever do click ops before doing IAC? Uh, or what's the, what's the order of operation for you? I definitely do click ops before IAC. <laughs> so I click first and then I go and I do my IAC after that. But I am starting to change a little bit because I'm getting more and more comfortable with my cloud skills. So I am starting to do IAC first because I already know what I want to do in my head. So with practice, y'all, as you get better, you can just start with IAC as you get better. Yeah, I think that um, every person that is first getting into this is building things 
manually first, aka ClickOps. They're they're figuring out how, especially if they're not comfortable with AWS or or the cloud vendor of choice, whatever it is that they're trying to get into. So everyone, as they're getting started, they're they're clicking around, they're figuring things out, they're trying to trying to uh, just understand the, how things are wired together before automating all the processes. Which, which honestly is is standard operating procedure for anybody getting into the space. You you click around, you you figure out how to do it at the basics first. Everybody you know has to learn how to add in their head before they can switch over to a calculator. So this is this is basically the same process. Um, yep, and, and uh, <laughs> just a, a note, a couple things. Uh, some uh, it was asked, do we need Lucid Chart to access those? I don't think you do. I don't think you need a Lucid account because it should just share and, and have access. Uh, if anyone can verify mm. that for me, I just don't have 100% confidence with this, um, but I'm pretty sure you don't. But I can also make them accessible another way. Uh, for the hearing impairment, um, because it's live, we can't generate them out on the fly. It's very difficult. However, this is recorded. And so what's recorded, YouTube will generate out the closed captioning or, or um, the subtitles. And so it will be there, and it's just a limitation of that. Um, LinkedIn, I can't remember if it has live captioning. It might or it might not. Yes. Um, it, it, I does. Think it, it I, does. I think it does. Okay. So, it does. I'm looking so, at it so, now. And now that I'm remembering, yes, I think what we did is we said for those who um, are having issues with YouTube or need the captioning, you'll have to go over to LinkedIn, the LinkedIn stream. Uh, I probably can share it. Uh, see if I can grab the link here. Open a new tab here and just grab the link. I'll just drop it in here in the chat for those who need the closed captioning. So uh, here is the link, if if that helps. Um, but anyway, let's just uh, look at our diagram here. So I'm just going to zoom in on in. And I just want to talk about what we are building today. And it doesn't matter if we finish what we're building here in AWS. I just want to go through the motions and get you comfortable with AWS and talk around these things because some of these things just take time to spin up like distributions and stuff. So, and everything we're spinning up is in the free tier, so it should be okay. But it, we're just exploring the AWS console and where these things are. And so what I'm interested here to talk about is the S3 bucket, uh, the CloudFront distribution, the origin access controls, the static website hosting, which is here. Um, and so it's basically this track over here that we are looking at. And uh, so hopefully that will make sense. But let's jump over to our AWS account. So uh, uh, folks, you should be logging your AWS account. Can I get a plus one in the live stream if you are logged in to your AWS account and ready to go like I am here? Can I get some plus ones? And I also know, uh, watch the chat here. Also, while you all are doing your plus ones, also click that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I, I am going to be your hype person, Andrew. I swear. Okay, that's right. <laughs> I, I never tell people to do that, which is crazy, but um, I really should because I always forget. Those all those all right, plus ones like are, are likes, right? <laughs> yep. Oh, yes, exactly. Okay, great. So we are we are uh, we are um, uh, we are all ready to go. So. Uh, you know, there's again, there's two components of this. This is just static website hosting. It's not particularly difficult, but um, uh, again, we just want to go through it. Maybe maybe you've used AWS before and the UI has changed. Just understand that AWS likes to change the UI all the time. This is not unique to AWS. It's with all of them. So uh, we'll keep make sure we're situated. The first thing I want you to know is where are you? What region are you in? And I'm just going to zoom this up so it's a bit larger. But the first thing you should check, and I'm going to do the best to zoom it in, is make sure you are where you think you are. Um, so in the top right corner, um, I'm in CA Central 1. That's where I like to launch my resources because I'm in Canada. You can launch them wherever you want. Uh, and it's best to try to launch your, your resources in the closest primary region of your area. When I say primary region, I just mean that there is one region in your geographic area that AWS likes to treat as the superstar region. And so in mine, well, Canada only has one. I think they're getting another one in Calgary soon. But uh, if it wasn't this, it'd be US East 1, right, for me. Um, but if you're in uh, Europe, I believe it's EU Central 1, right? If you are in other areas like South America, well, you have one, so that's going to be yours uh, and, and things like that. So and if, if you really don't know what to do, 
then you can always just do US East one. That's always a safe choice. Uh, different regions have different restrictions on services. The services we're using today should work in every region because they are core services, simple services. Uh, and I hope I don't regret saying that. And people come back and say, hey, this doesn't work in my region. But for the most part, you can pick whatever region you like and you should be in good shape. And uh, yeah, some uh, for India, uh, they're saying AP South One India. You know, so that's what I recommend. I'm not sure for Africa. My best guess would be if we go over here, we're probably be Cape Town. That's what I would think because AWS has a lot of uh, a large amount of facilities in um, South Africa, and the other part of it is just the fact that uh, I think that's where virtual machines were born. EC2 was in Cape Town, or maybe it was uh, Johannesburg. That's a place in South Af uh, South Africa, right? I believe so. It's one. It's one of the two. But then. Anyway, uh, what I want you all to do is I want you to go all the way to the top here into the search, and we're going to type in S3, okay? And from there, we're going to go here and click into S3, okay? And we'll, we'll patiently wait. And now we should have our S3 buckets. So S3 buckets is a form of cloud storage. In some sense, it's kind of like, uh, but it's not, but it's kind of like uh, Google Drive. It's kind of like Dropbox. It's kind of like iCloud storage. I'm not a, I'm not a huge user of iCloud, but, uh, and the idea is that it's a place to store uh, digital files in the cloud and you don't have to worry about the size of the drive. You just dump things in there and you just pay for what you consume, what you store, and your downloads uh, like in traffic, if that makes sense. But th the way it's different is that it's not as uh, user-friendly as something like Dropbox or Google Drive, but it doesn't need to be because we're using it to integrate into our applications. Uh, so it's great for developers, it's great for cloud engineers, but for regular consumers, you wouldn't use this as a Dropbox replacement. Um, what you do is you probably build a layer on top of this uh, and make your own Dropbox. And I can't remember, I think, I don't know if it is Dropbox that uses S3, but one of the providers actually does do that. They basically, it's they're just it's just on top of S3, if that makes sense. So you're using the thing that's underneath it, the, the substrate below uh, those providers, if that makes sense. Uh, Google Drive, yeah, Google Drive is good. You just drop things in and they go. So, you you can see I already have some buckets here. Uh, if this is a new account for you, uh, you should not have any buckets here. Uh, this, this is from the prior bootcamp and some other stuff. Um, you can see I have Harlan's Lawn Care website. If you did the previous bootcamp, you know that's my twin sister's, brother-in-law's uh, business for cutting lawns. Okay, because Baker put it in there. I don't know why he did that, but he just dumped it in this account so I can never tear this account down. <laughs> because they'll take down a, a, a business there. But what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a new bucket. So, and, you know, when uh, mine looks different when I search for S3, and that's fair, um, uh, you know, the consistency in terms of searching can be different. Sometimes the UI can be different. Like, AWS can roll out UI changes that only show up to some users and might not show to others. Uh, usually what they'll do is they'll warn you and say, hey, you are in the new experience. You want to roll back to the other one. But you know, I, I can't guarantee that the experience of the UI is going to be the same for everyone. That's why when I teach cloud, I like to try to be API driven as much as I can because sometimes this stuff gets confusing. But we're going to do our best to go through the, uh, the UI. Well, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a new bucket. So we'll go ahead and hit the nice big orange button. And we're here. So can I get a plus two if you're on the create bucket screen? And yeah, uh, they're saying that Dropbox started off with S3. Lately, they've changed to a hybrid mode, which makes sense because if you want to scale, eventually you'll replace the most expensive part at some point. So we got plus twos. And so the, the, the first thing we want to do is name our bucket. When we name our buckets, our bucket names are within the global namespace. What does that mean? Bucket names are like domain names because they literally will produce a subdomain on a domain name. So whatever the restrictions that you have for, for a domain name for naming are going to, for a subdomain, are going to apply for the bucket name. The other part is that it has to be unique. 
and greatly appreciate uh, Shazad. Thank you for your contributions. Shazad, if, if people don't know Shazad, Shazad, I, I think Shazad's, yeah, Shazad is a, a red squad and from the other boot camp and one of our one of our best boot campers. So it's really great to have Shazad back in the boot camp here again uh, and greatly appreciate uh, their support. Um, but coming back over to here. So the idea again is that these global namespaces are, are global. Um, so the idea is that I can name this whatever I want. You can't name it the same thing. So if I call this Andrew Bucket, it, it probably is already taken up by somebody. I'm going to try do, and do that just to show you what happens. You can try this too. You can put an Andrew here because we want to observe that these are unique, if that makes sense. Different providers have different rules. So like if you go to Alibaba Cloud, their rules about global namespaces is different, uh, where you have a bit more flexibility in terms of that based on region, I think. Um, so different providers have different rules, but for the most part, there is some level of um, restriction globally uh, for buckets for any cloud, cloud storage provider, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go here and put in Andrew. And yeah, I, I don't know about other different characters. I th That's the thing that the rules might actually be different for a different area. So I don't know if it's just the Latin characters, but that'd be a very interesting. So uh, we have our choice of region. So there are some services in AWS that are global services. That means that when you go to them, they just say global at the top, right? So you don't care where they are. It's just gonna be in some global uh, global namespace because they might actually exist in multiple places. We're gonna find that about CloudFront. What's interesting with um, eight, uh, S3 buckets is that it is a global service, but you still choose the region to which you put your bucket in. Uh, why that is, I don't remember. Uh, Chris, do you have any ideas why that why it's also global, but you choose the region? I'm sorry, I was answering questions in the uh, the thread. What was what was the question, please? <laughs> in S3, it's a global service, but why do you choose your AWS region? Because it's both, right? Uh, yes, it's both. So the namespace is global, but the storage that they put it in is regional. So you ha so you you know where you know have to pick the region so that you know which hard drives effectively it gets written to, um, but because it's leveraging the global um, DNS service, it it has to be globally from a regional perspective. Okay, so so it is it is a regional service, but it has that weird that weird uh, caveat where it's it's marked as global for that that purpose, and that makes sense. But um, I think most services aren't like that. Um, like it's usually they're global or they're they're not, and then S three is kind of this uh, one that's kind of in between, if that makes sense. But like, I'm just saying this is the only case I can think of where it says global, but then you choose a region, is is what I'm thinking. But uh, unless DynamoDB does that, but anyway, we'll find out as we work through this. So I'm going to choose CA Central one. You choose whatever you like, um, and then we'll scroll on down. And we have some object ownership permissions. Uh, we're going to leave this disabled. We do not need ACL. This is for allowing people remote access using ACL controls into yours. Uh, there hasn't been many use cases for me to use ACL in any project, but uh, I'm sure there is some case. We have the block public access setting for this, bu uh, this bucket. This feature is really interesting because over the years, AWS keeps trying to make sure people don't expose their buckets. And they've made this feature, they keep adding to it. Like, I feel like there's gonna be like 10 check marks at one point being like, are you sure you want to make it public? Uh, we are going to keep our buckets um, locked down. We're never gonna turn, whoops, don't <laughs> keep that check mark, keep that check mark. Uh, but you'll find out for those who are returning from the previous boot camp, we had done static website hosting. We actually opened the bucket, but we had used um, origin access identities. And in this boot camp, we're using origin access controls, which is a newer feature. And uh, at least through this, you don't you don't ever have to um, open your your bucket. So we're going to keep it a lot more uh, secure, if that makes sense. I hope I'm not frozen. I probably froze for a second. Uh, so you're we'll you're not anymore, but you, but you were going Sorry. through the, uh, the the public access, stuff, so <clears throat> yeah, every everything's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
We have bucket versioning. Generally, it's a good idea to turn on bucket version versioning. We're not doing this for this boot camp. Um, now, it's a good idea to do it, but I also do find that it, it does increase the complexity when you are trying to get rid of things in your bucket. But what bucket versioning does is it allows you to add a, um, every time you push to the same named key in your bucket, it will create a new version on top of it that you'll access, um, kind of making like an onion, if that makes sense. Um, but uh, in order to delete, I think you have to tear everything down. It's, it's quite the headaches. So we're not going to do that here in this boot camp. But uh, this is really good if, if, let's say, somebody got into your account and they tried deleting things, then they can only delete up to a certain point, uh, which is really good. Uh-oh. I may have froze again. Hmm. We need like the, uh, what's that? The Jeopardy music. <laughs> <laughs> do -de -do. I, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> and I don't have my stream deck set up for music here. I need to get a stream deck. Um, oh, they're so much fun. Yeah. All right. So this is the fun of doing stuff live. Anyone who ever comes to my stream, you already know. Like <laughs> These things happen. I, I will say, um, while Andrew is in the process of reestablishing his network connectivity, turning on, so there's a couple different areas where you can store your backend state file. We are going to be using uh, Terraform Cloud, and that's where the state file is automatically versioned and, and protected. Um, so HashiCorp does a good job of making sure that your state file is protected. And I've gone through a number of videos where I've talked about making sure that your state file is very well protected. One of the, so you never want it. To, so the, the state file that we're using for Terraform is the backend information wherein all of your data for, for your provisioning process is being stored. That will include the ARN numbers for EC2 instances. Uh, if you're running a database, that will also include the usernames and passwords. So it is horribly important to make sure that one, your state file is unavailable to the outside. Uh, you don't want anybody being able to see your usernames and passwords in plain text. And two, that it is protected from fail. You don't want the file to become corrupted and inaccessible. So one of the techniques to do that is to, is to store it in Terraform Cloud. If you are not doing that, there, there, is, there is no production environment out there that has your state file saved to a local laptop. Um, that is, if you are doing that, you are asking for it and that's, you're going to have a bad day. So one of the things that you can do is if you are storing your state file, not in Terraform Cloud, if you're using S3, the, the bucket versioning that Andrew was talking about is something that you want to leave turned on. Because what that does is every time you change your state file, a copy is, it, as it versions through, very similar to how GitHub works. You're, hey, he's back. What's going on, Andrew Brown? We can't hear you, though. We can see you. We can't hear you. How about now? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I was ad-libbing, okay. talking about the importance of state file and why you would want to keep bucket versioning turned on. on an, if you were using S3 as your backend for a state file, why you would have versioning turned on, excuse me. So. Um, back to you. Oh, okay, oh great. instructor. Yeah. You know what happened? <laughs> you know what hmm. happened? My kid. What happened? My, uh, my no. three-year-old went in my basement. The kid pulled the router again? Pulled the router out. <laughs> again? <laughs> yeah. But hey, at least we know we could survive if I, uh, if I go offline here, but hey, I'm back. So, uh, yeah, this is how it goes. I don't know. Usually oh, we lock children. the door, but, uh, I don't know. You know how it is. Anyway, well, at least I, well, I don't know how it is for everybody, but uh, kids are a lot of work. Anyway, uh, so we're back here. And yeah, I think what we did is we did a, a tag here. And so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use our user UID from the platform. You know, and somebody said, uh, it, was, it was a bit snarky, but they're like, is this the AWS bootcamp or the Terraform bootcamp? Well, the idea is that this week coming up is a lot of Terraform. I just want to make sure that people are aware of what it is that we're doing in Terraform because it's very hard when you're working through Terraform code and you don't know what it is that you're working with. So I just really want to make sure that those components make sense. But I'm going to go yeah. ahead and grab my user UID. Oh, sorry, yes? 
Yes, sorry. I was saying I just wrote back to them. Hopefully it didn't come across snarky. I never come across snarky. But yeah, we don't want to just assume that everyone has used S3 or knows fully about it. It is a beginner's boot camp and people do come to the boot camp from all different levels of a tech background. So keep that in mind. So Andrew, when you cut out, you were on bucket versioning. So was there anything up above? Okay. So yeah, okay, okay, good. All right, so um, we've got bucket versioning disabled. We've, we're tagging it with UUID, um, that's right. and the and the and the optional value. Okay, good. All right, we're all we're all synced up now. Yeah. Oh, great. And uh, yeah, hopefully the live stream is more stable now. <laughs> no one's pulling out my cable. Um, so uh, for uh, for encryption. Um, yeah, it's encrypted by default. So we have SEE S3. Was that always the case? Oh, you can you can disable it. I don't know why you'd want to. No, but you I guess you could that. disable it if, <laughs> if you'd like. If you're bananas. Should we? No, yeah. absolutely not. So, but uh, yeah, if, if it seems like I don't always have confidence in terms of these things, it's because every time I use AWS, they change something. So I always have to say, does this change? Was this like this before? So just understand that is totally normal as a cloud engineer. Uh, if you're working as a solution architect, you have to keep on, on top of this stuff uh, quite a bit. Um, so that would be a fun role to work in. But anyway, we'll go down here and we have some advanced settings. Uh, there's object lock. So I think that's really good. Yeah, preventing object deletion. So I was I was talking about this in versioning, but I, I forgot to mention that I believe you have to have this turned on in order to have versioning in. And so that was my thought is that versioning forces uh, you to have to turn object lock on. And that kind of helps there. And it does say there down below, object lock works only in version buckets. And only object lock automatically enables bucket versioning. Can you have bucket mm. versioning without object lock on? I'm not 100% certain, but we're not using those features because those are advanced features and uh, we don't have a use case for them. So I know that was a lot of ramble, but we'll go ahead and we'll go and create our bucket. And we'll click that. Yeah, and some people are just confirming those specifics. And notice that it did not work. If we scroll all the way to the top, it says bucket with the same name already exists. So there's already an Andrew bucket. I cannot have that bucket. Um, what jerks. I'm going to do, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the <laughs> user UUID because that should be generally unique. Uh, if those who have never heard of a UUID before, like you've heard of a UUID, but you're not sure what it is, it stands for universal, universal, what does it stand for? Hold stand on, I'll go for work. Universally, <laughs> universally unique identifier. There we go. I think I know. I I I know, but it's just uh, those ones are tricky. And the idea is that um, uh, they are so unique that it you shouldn't have a conflict because the number range is so large. It'd be very difficult. They can conflict, I think, uh, but it'd be very hard hard for it to ever occur. So nearly impossible. And so. Uh, if we use our, our UUIDs, we're going to have uh, less of an issue. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to grab our user UUID, and we'll go back and paste that into here. And so, oh, the bucket with this name already exists. Really? Are you sure? Did you, did you make? I just said it was unique. <laughs> did you no, already no, create no, a no. bucket using that? Really? No. No, I did not. <laughs> we can check. No way. There is maybe. absolutely no way. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Unless unless one of the students maybe you're right. maybe copy I did. pasted I, that. I can't remember. Like I don't think so. <laughs> well, let's go take a look. I'm not I don't know. I'm in storage lens. Let's go back here. I'm just gonna shrink back to the regular size. We'll go over to buckets. And I'll paste this in here. See, I don't have this bucket name. I've never made this bucket before with this bucket name. So that's OK. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go in front here, and I'll just put Andrew. There you go. Or re the real Andrew. OK. And we'll go all the way down the bottom. We'll create our bucket. But yeah, I just wanted to really uh, make that point that those are unique, and someone might have your name. Uh, and it can be very frustrating when they have your uh, bucket name. So here is my bucket down here below. Okay. okay. And so, yeah, well, UIDs are like they are unique, but they're unique up to a certain point. 
it'd be very hard to uh, have a conflict. But again, if somebody copies that and pastes it, I'm going to run into an issue. Um, I had a very unique bucket name and it said it was taken. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> it's frustrating. It's uh, I don't know if it's like easier to get a, a unique domain name versus this. Eh? But anyway, mm -hmm. so can I get a plus 10 if you are in here in the bucket and you're ready to upload something? <laughs> got so look, waiting ticket. for those plus 10s. <laughs> We got a plus 11, so one person's uh, one step ahead of uh, us, which is great. Seeing plus 10 is good. good. I'm seeing great. some comments if you can increase the screen size again. Yeah, I'll alternate between that. Um, the mm -hmm. only issue, though, is that, uh, yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't squash well, so I have to move between those two there. Um, so the idea is that we want to set up static website hosting. Um, and while we're waiting, I need to create some uh, uh, index HTML pages or something that we'll uh, need to utilize to upload here. So what I want people to do is to go to the repo. And we're just going to temporarily make these. Um, I'm going to go and match the branch where we're all supposed to be. So if this is weak, I'll go to tags. That'll be easier. And so we should all be on 090. So I'm going to go to my 090. I'm going to go ahead and launch my Git pod. And I'm going to let that spin up. I'll hit continue. And while that's spinning up in the background, it's a good thing it's not Sunday because tomorrow they have maintenance, eh? Right. Uh, we're going to make our way back over to S3 um, here. And we're going to enable um, static website hosting. And where it is, I always forget, but I'm going to guess it's under management. I never remember where it is, no matter how many times I do it. And we scroll all the way down. Um, so it's not there. That's OK. We'll keep clicking around. Let's try properties. And there it is. OK, right at the bottom. So we found it. So click on properties. And we'll go all the way down to the ground. And we'll find static website hosting. And I want you to go ahead and hit edit. And for the most part, uh, you know, most providers that have cloud storage generally have, have static website hosting for their for their cloud storage. So I'm just saying that there is some transferable knowledge to other things like GCP, Azure, and I'm not sure about Alibaba Cloud, but uh, you know, they don't work the same way. But they generally will have this kind of static website hosting uh, in in a similar way. But uh, yeah, we'll go here and we'll have it enabled. And I just want to get a plus 11 if you are here in static website hosting and you have it enabled and you're just ready to fill out this form. Is there a reason uh, that we are using Gitpod? Because it is very easy to teach when everyone is using the same environment. You can use local if you want. But I we're going to use Gitpod because this person asks just... that question every episode. Yeah, I was every just day. responding. I was just responding back to them. But like I always tell y'all, you know, it's your preference. Just if you get stuck, just understand we're showing y'all how to do it in Gitpod. So keep that in mind. I have a I have a very good friend who came to one of my workshops four years ago. Uh, they're trying to get into uh, DevOps. And every single thing in the in in the workshop, they just decided to do it differently because they wanted to do do it differently. And they're like, "Can you help me?" And I was like, "No, nope. <laughs> you're doing everything differently." And they said, "That's okay," but uh, I don't know. It was it was fun. Um, but for Gitpod, all we were doing was hitting that button and launching up that space. We just want somewhere to create those files. We're not going to commit these. We're just doing them temporarily uh, for the purpose of this here. So. Let's go back over to uh, our bucket, which is up here. And there's a couple of things we want to fill in. The first is the index page. So we want index HTML. And we are going to fill in the error page, but just not now because we don't have a need for it. Well, let's fill it in anyway. We have an index page and an error page. Okay. Then we have some redirection rules. So um, if you'd like, we're not going to. There are ways to uh, redirect things to other places. Also notice up here, we have two options, host a static website and redirect requests for an object. 
uh, I find that it's very common that when you're setting up static website hosting for like a domain that you own, you will set up a uh, an S3 bucket with the domain name, and then you'll set one up with www, and you'll use redirect to redirect one bucket to another one. We are not doing that because we are not using custom domains. We're just going to use the domain that we're going to get from CloudFront to connect to Terror Towns. So going down below here, there is this thing, but all you need to do is set up the index HTML, the error HTML, and we'll save those changes. And uh, if that has successfully saved and you're seeing this green, can we get a plus 15 in the chat? Waiting nice. for those plus 15s. There we go. Good. Plus 25. Excellent. Plus 25. Well, you know, if, if, <laughs> if you're ahead, that's okay. Okay. So, and we can see we have our tag applied. So that's good. So let's now go over to Gitpod and we want to create a couple of HTML pages. Now, uh, these are going to be really simple. Uh, later on in the bootcamp, I'm, I'm going to try to put together a um, an asset kit so that we can create some funky looking pages to put into Terra Towns. And I'm going to kind of show you how I go about making a funky page. We're not trying to create good looking pages. We're not trying to do things to standard. We're just trying to build personal pages that are going to be fun to use. Uh, and so what I want to do is make a new folder here. I'm going to call it public. And then... Oh, by the way, I'm going to bump this up because I realize that's really small. And I'm going to make a new file in here. I'm going to call it index.html. Okay, we'll click into this. And we need to put some HTML in here. I do not feel like uh, figuring out how to make an HTML page. I should know at this point because I've been doing this forever. But I'm going to try to use ChatGPT. If you don't have ChatGPT, that's okay. Um, we'll see if we could find another source here. I'm going to open up ChatGPT. And if you're wondering, yes, I was looking up the other day about chocolate prices because I can't believe chocolate bars are like $3. And I wanted to understand that apparently in the 1970s, I can't believe this. They used to cost 20 cents. Imagine taking two dimes and getting yourself a, a payday. That'd be amazing. But uh, <laughs> we'll go to new chat. I just can't imagine paying 20 cents for a chocolate bar. That, that sounds great. Um, We'll go here and I'll just say, uh, create a static, or we'll just create an HTML page. What's something we can do? Um, that has a recipe for finished pancakes. Okay. And that's true, good chocolate is expensive, but it's very good. And I've had some very good chocolate. There's a really good chocolate store in Toronto. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but I, it's really good. And they, uh, it's like four pieces is like 40 bucks or something. And they're really good. So you can do whatever you want here. We really just need like the doc tag, the HTML tag, head tag. I'll show you these for those who are not using ChatGPT or, or Bard or, or whatever. Um, you know, you can just copy paste a few there. And you know what? No one else likes paydays, but I love paydays we actually don't get them in canada but there's a few places in town especially specialty places i always run to get them because they're that good to me but um maybe i'll try to make my own payday bar one day like at home like a diy maybe i'll make that a page i'll, I'll try to make a payday bar and i'll post it to terra uh, terra towns cooking you'll you'll see the result whether it's good or bad <laughs> so i've generated out my html I'm going to go back over here. Finnish pancakes is also very common for uh, the region of Canada that I live in because there's a lot of Finnish people that uh, immigrated to this part of Canada. But I'm going to go here. I'm going to paste the contents. I'm going to say allow. I'm going to save it. So you do whatever you want to do. And I want to uh, view this page. So um, can I get a plus 20 if you have something here? And by the way, if, if you don't have ChatGPT and it's taking too long, you can put anything you want in here. You could go and just put like, hello, a single line. You can keep it really simple if you want. But just tell me if you have something filled in here, just a plus 20. 
Okay, great. And yeah, it's okay if you're falling behind. Uh, you can just watch and then the video will get published later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install. I need to serve this HTML page locally so I can view it. I'm just curious what it looks like. So I'm just going to type in uh, npm. I'm going to bring this on over. I'm going to type in uh, npm install HTTP server. Okay. This is, and we do this in the bootcamp later on, so we'll be doing this more than once. I love the logo for this service. I love, that's why I always use this, this uh, HTTP server, because how can you not like that logo? <laughs> it's a V8 rocket attached to a turtle. So we'll go back over here and um, we have npm install HTTP server. And so once that's installed, what we can do is we can just type in HTTP server and it should serve up this public page. Uh, or is it HTTP serve? I installed it, right? Oh, you know what? We have to do the hyphen G on it for global. Sorry. You'll have to hit up everybody. You'll have to type in npm install HTTP server hyphen G and we'll hit enter. Now it's globally installed. I forgot to do that. And so once that's there, we'll do, we'll hit up and we'll do HTTP server. And so now it should be serving. So I'll make that public. I know that was a lot of steps. So I'm going to just check plus 30. If you have installed HTTP server globally with the hyphen G flag and you have it running and it has this green stuff here that says 8080 plus 30. If you were not able to do it or you're still working through it, Give me uh, a negative five. Keep, just keeping the numbers. Uh, all what was the place. command again? I'll, I'll paste it in the uh, chat. HTTP hyphen server. Oh, sorry. If you install is npm install uh, HTTP server hyphen G. There we go. We got a few negative fives and that's okay. We'll wait a little bit here. I like uh, Mariachi is, is doing some math for us. <laughs> Negative 99. <laughs> okay. Uh, just to help people catch up. I know it can go really quick. Um, so, oops, I'm trying to type clear. So the first command we're typing here is npm install HTTP server hyphen G, right? And that's going to do that install. And then it'll be HTTP server to run. run it. And again, you know, if this is, if, if anyone gets left behind, it's okay because we have this recorded and you can go back and watch it. But I'm going to ask again, is there anybody that is still stuck? Can you give me a negative 10 if you're still behind? Negative 10. And yes, we will be adding, whoops, we will be adding this in a future video. We don't need to do that right now, but we will do that. Uh, it's, it's one of our previous boot campers. They know what we'll be doing in the future. Good foresight. Uh, so still a few negative tens. Okay. Uh, for the negative tens, where are you stuck? What part are you stuck on? And we have some creative folks here using uh, extensions. Not sure how to uh, get this code on Gitpod. So all we're doing is there's terminal down below. You click any of the ones on the, on the right-hand side, right? And we're just typing the command. And it, it can do it in this one or this one. It doesn't really matter. But we're just typing npm install, npm install, HP server, hyphen G. Installed but cannot reach the site. You need to go to the beginning after creating the HTML file. And then there's some interesting. Anybody know what this error is? Um, that is if you're installing AWS CLI twice. So maybe you're launching an old CLI workspace and it's trying to install on top of the old one. But anyway, for those who are stuck, Remember, to, if you are in the Discord, utilize the Discord uh, to ask those questions. Um, those who are not there, you can still get into the support tier, which is the $5, and go ask your questions there. Or this video will be available afterwards to watch again. And you can watch at your own pace and slow it down. But anyway, what we'll do is I want to make sure I'm serving this. 
And so we have localhost 8080. I'm going to open it in my browser and I'm going to get this preview. For those who are following along, it looks like it was trying to put an image in there. That's totally okay. I'm going to check this recipe to see if it's actually accurate. Four eggs, two. I wouldn't do four eggs. I'd do two eggs. This looks like it's a double a double load of pancakes. This would be for like eight people. I can already tell. I make I make these pancakes all the time, so I know what the recipe is. Um, yeah, it's pretty close to the original. Pretty good. But anyway, um, for those uh, are following along, who can actually see their website like this? Can I get a plus 40 if you can see your website, if you're able to open it? If you if you didn't hit that button time, you go to ports here, and there'll be a link. If you click through, it should open it up as well. Plus 40 for those who can see here. I know they did that very quickly, but here in Gitpod, when you uh, when it started up, it did localhost 8080. You go to ports here, and if it's not public here, there's a I think it's this button here. It can unlock it. Okay. But um, I just also want to point out that uh, if you are having a hard time with Gitpod, I have a free Gitpod course um, that's also on the Example platform. There's a paid option if you want to go get certified in Gitpod. You don't have to, but I'm just saying that if if you're struggling with Gitpod and you're new to these things, I have a very very thorough course on it that you could do in a weekend and get really, really good at Gitpod if if that interests you. Not trying I to plug, just not, trying to help those that are stuck. I did not know, but you should do this. Like I did not know you had a Gitpod course. That's good to know. Yeah. Um yeah, very, very, very thorough. Maybe more thorough than than necessary, but uh if you like the tool, right? So I cover every little thing about it. Because I I was trying to explore it for my own team. I wanted to make sure I knew every feature of it um nice. so i have my nice finished page and so we we need to get this onto uh s3 actually you know what let's use the cli for this yeah let's let's be risky i was just going to drag this in place you can actually just drag files in here but let's use the cli and live dangerously because then i don't have to download it to my computer and then upload it and it's a bit of a headache so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the aws cli tab here which i have open here how do you connect your uh, your Git pod to your S3? The thing is, is that um, in week zero, we configured the AWS CLI. So if I type in AWS here, connected, right? And remember, we added our credentials. So it's not that we're connecting Git pod to S3. It's that we have the AWS CLI, and the AWS CLI with your credentials is able to connect to S3, if that makes sense. And Ultraman is super excited for the CLI, and you all should be because it is a great skill to have. So uh, what we can do is we can list out our buckets. We'll do AWS S3 LS, and this will list out our buckets. I have a lot of buckets. You might only have one or two uh, based on what you have in there. So that's the first thing. It's also good to do that just to see if you are in the right account. So we do have that other command, AWS S3 S STS get caller identity, which will tell us we are. I think that's in our Gitpod account. But I, a lot of times, my sanity check when I'm really lazy because I'm really bad at typing this out. So I'll just do AWS S3, and if I recognize buckets in the account, I know which account I'm in. So what we want to do is we want to push our index file to our bucket. How could we do that? Well, there's a command for it. So I'm going to type in AWS and hit Enter. I'm going to get this prompt open here. So can I get a plus? Uh, I forgot what we're on. Plus 50 if you. If you're typing enter and you get this prompt here, a plus 50. If it doesn't prompt like this, give me um, a negative 17. <laughs> okay. And I just want to point out, yeah, people like the negative seven, close enough. 17, seven, whichever. As long as it's in the negatives, I know what it is. But the, the, this prompt is working this way because in the in that other week uh, in our, our Gitpod file, we added this thing here. And that's what causes this window to do that. So if this is not set correctly, you might not get this interactive prompt. Uh, OK? So you know, just understand that you might have your Gitpod configured incorrectly. You don't need this interactive thing. It just makes it a lot easier when you, don't, you can't remember all the commands. So I'm going to type in S3. Sorry, here, S3. And this one's a little bit strange because AWS has S3 and then S3 API. 
And it's confusing because why not just have one? And my guess is that when Adabus was building their CLI, they first built S3 and then they built S3 API because S3 was limited or there could have been reasons for two. Chris, have you do you know any rumors as to why there's an S3 and S3 API? It's, could you take any wild guesses no. and just make something up? That was that was back before I got into AWS, back in 2006, I want to say. Uh, so I have no idea as to the history on that one. So sometimes it's fun to poke, poke around and find the history. And the reasons could be silly, or there could be good reasons. But all mm -hmm. I know is there's AWS S3, and you can upload that way, and you can use S3 API. What I find is that the S3 API is a lot more uh, flexible. What we can do, let's look at S3 first. We have some commands. We'll do S3 because it's simpler. But we have commands. LS is for list. We can look at the website, which is kind of cool. We have CP, move, remove, sync. Uh, I don't know what MB is. What's RB? MBRB. Not sure. Make but, bucket, um, remove bucket. Uh, make bucket, remove bucket. OK. And so. What we want to do is we want to copy a local file. So I'm going to go for CP. I'm going to hit space. And we want to copy the bucket index HTML. So I think what we can do is we can just type in public index HTML. I could be wrong, but I think we can do that. It might want like the file thing in front of it. Sometimes it wants this, but I don't think so. So I'm going to try this, see if it can take a local file. And then I'm going to give it its location. So I can say index HTML. And I think this is what we need to do. Uh, if we don't know, if we really don't know, we can look up the documentation. We can look it look up it in here, but it's uh, not easy when we're doing it with Gitpod. So I'm actually going to go look up this command. I'm going to type in AWS S3 CLI into Google. Okay, I want you all to do this. Okay, go to Google or Bing or whichever search engine you prefer and type in AWS S3 CLI because this is something you got to do all the time is look things up. And I'm going to click on the first one. It says 129.52. That's not the latest. I'm going to click into that. And uh, some people are saying, yeah, no bucket name. You're right. We probably do need a bucket name. Uh, can I get a plus? Let's go to the hundreds now. Plus 100 if you are here on the S3 page. Plus 100. Great. Can I get a negative 99 if you're just lost on the webs? OK. Negative 99 for me, but that's because I'm keeping up with the chat. So um, one interesting thing with the AWS CLI documentation I'm back. I had uh, my internet is. I have no kids in my basement, playing with. My Check <laughs> your kid quick. Yeah. I well, we'll see. We'll, um, but um, so for some reason, the Go Google always links to the old documentation. So you just got to make sure you click on version two. There's a link here. It's not very obvious. Honestly, the old one is pretty pretty similar to version two, but we want to be on version two. So click here, and go to version two. I want to show you a little trick. When you look up, um, when you look up uh, the AWS CLI, if you ever want all the commands, click the AWS logo, and then it takes you to all the commands. Okay, that's a secret. A principal engineer taught me that. That's a new that's one for me. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's just, well, because often you go here and you go, oh, okay, where do I click? Do I go to home or whatever? Just click the logo. Anyway, so we're here on S3, and we're looking for a, a particular command. So it's down below here, but I'm going to go and click the AWS logo, and we'll scroll on down, and we'll try to find S3. Or you can search for it. That's faster. Okay, We'll click in S3. Oh, we're in the same spot. All right. And usually they'll list, I thought they list the commands at the top here, but maybe it's here on the left-hand side. So we'll go to Available Commands. On the left-hand side, we should see the list. Can I get a plus 110 if you're here on available commands? And you can see them. Seriously, navigating documentation is like a super skill for cloud engineers or DevOps or cloud programmers. 
or whatever cloud role, cloud architects. One, one thousand percent. I've, I did not get good at reading and researching official documentation until I started doing DevOps. So um, we're going to go to that CP command. I'm thirsty. Time, time for a break with Memento. It's my Memento cup. I couldn't think of like a generic thing to say about Memento, you know, like when they have those product inserts, but I if anyone wants to send Mentos. me more metal tumblers, the I'll take the them. fresh maker. Yeah. It sounds like was it, when I say Memento, it just sound like Mentos, eh? <laughs> um, so, so here they'll usually have examples on the left-hand side. We have examples. If you click it, I thought he was going to drink poutine. Maybe. There's a there's a type of hot dog we have here in Canada where you you, you just boil the hot dog and you put it in a bun, but you put maple syrup uh, on it, or you can dip it, and um, they're like maple dip dogs. They're real good. Andrew Brown, I have a question. Sure. Did you just say dip your hot dog in maple syrup? Yeah, they're really good. Is that a common Canadian practice? Of course it is. Dipping your dogs in maple? <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about in Edmonton, but but over here, we like to dip our dogs in maple. <laughs> uh, okay, so follow-up question. Do you also use other condiments or is it just maple? Is it like ketchup and mustard and relish? Are those things on hot dogs up there or no? You can, but why would you? <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's, it's it's maple syrup and blueberries. That's your two. That's your two. My hometown they have a hot really dog? good hot sauce. That's like a, it's called Heartbeat. Heartbeat. Yeah, we're we're totally uh, Heartbeat um, hot sauce. This is my, this is I, like I live in Scriber, but my hometown they have this, and they have like blueberry hot sauce. It's really good. It, I here. thought I was being a renegade by putting gochujang on a hot dog. Hmm. All right, I camp I apologize. Please camp. let us let us get back on track. This okay. that, that was a giant segue. Now I know more about you, Andrew Brown. Uh, will you send a list of the tech commands used for the session? We should really try to update the notes in the platform with with those. So we'll do our best that we can to, to have them. But here, notice that it shows us how to use it. So we don't know how to use it. The Canadians are leaving the group chat. <laughs> Andrew does not speak um, for all Canadians. <laughs> sure I do. Sure I do, especially the French. <laughs> I can hear but, people um, in Chicago screaming. <laughs> um, okay, I'm stopping now. So so anyway, we have uh, the AWS command, so AWS S3. And, and notice I said like there was, they have this funny thing in front of it. Like there's one for file you can do, but... Um, uh, yeah, so it looks like AWS S3, copy the file that you want to, and then the location. So the bucket name has to be included into it. So this is kind of like a special bucket address that AWS created. So we'll have to go back here. And our command's a little bit wrong. It should be um, S3, colon, forward slash, forward slash, and then the bucket name. Our bucket name, we'll have to go back to S3 for that. What do I call my bucket? The real... Where is it? Come on. We got to refresh this page. Get a little bit lightheaded. Uh, I really should have. There before. There it is. There it is, right there. I had a. I should have packed myself a maple dog here. Anyway, so I'm copying you that did, name. You did this last time. I'll go back over eat some, to eat our some food. Yeah, after the stream, and uh, so we have the name here: forward slash index HTML. What's the path for images? Uh, if we add an image to index.html, it should be assets or outside. Uh, you know, if you had images, I would have a folder called assets in there. And we actually do tackle that in the bootcamp. So that should be interesting. But yeah, it would be in the assets directory or the public, the public, the assets folder should be in the public directory. Sounds like uh, Mariachi is doing something really interesting for their page. Um, so, you know, it should be public index.html, S3 bucket, so it knows where it's going, and index.html. So that's what we want. Um, and I get a plus 150 if you have your address all lined up here. And it looks like, kind of looks like this. 
a plus 150. Okay. Uh, I'm sure some people are having a hard time with wrangling that S3 name. That it is kind of hard to get it in here and get it pasted in, but um, you know, hopefully not too many people are falling too far behind. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and fingers crossed that it works, and completed. So it looks like it worked. So folks, hit enter here. I'm going to go over to my S3 bucket. I'm going to see, is it there? It is. Okay. Can I get a plus? Plus 150 hot dogs on the wall. <laughs> um, can I get a plus 200 if you have your index HTML page uploaded and it's sitting right here? Can I get a plus 200? Nice. OK. So um, if it didn't work for you, what you got to do is you got to go back and ch check that address. It's really easy to muck this stuff up. Uh, if you, again, if you're, if, you're, if you're having a hard time here, make sure copy paste that will help you in the Discord if you have access to the Discord, which is you need support, at least support tier to be in there. And you can still get in today if you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, uh, that's uploaded. Now, the interesting thing here with the uh, static website hosting, if we go to properties, and we go all the way down to the bottom again, it should have produced this link here. And this is the static website hosting link. OK. And um, oh, and some, some are suggesting there is a shorter form of doing it, where if you, just, uh, if you don't have the index HTML on the end there, it would, it would just take the name of the file and put it in the key, which is interesting. I think that's what they're saying, is that we could go here and uh, well, the command's not showing up again, but we could have left that off and it probably still would have worked correctly, which is good. So anyway, coming back over to here, we have this address. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what happens. Okay. We're just going to sit here and watch our beautiful... Uh-oh, we got a 403. Chris, what's going on? Why did I get a 403? Oh, no. What could possibly be a mess? I don't know. What's what is a 403? Why and why is it forbidden? So the reason we got a 403, whoa. <laughs> whoa. What'd you do? The What's magnifying? happening? The magnifying? What's what Last what is going on? Okay, there we go. <laughs> did did my screen go crazy? Yes. It did. Yes. I had magnifier on in uh, Windows. It went all over the place. That was crazy. Never want to do that again. Oopsie. Um the reason we get a 403 is that by default, our bucket is not public. So if we go back over to S3, this is a security feature uh, over here. Uh, if we go all the way to the top uh, and we go to permissions, we are blocking public access. So this is not publicly accessible, this page. Another thing is that even if we had this turned on, we need a bucket policy. Uh, to say, okay, now it's accessible to the internet. You're allowed to create a bucket policy. Now, what permissions are allowed there? So a 403 is a forbidden. It means you do not have access. You're not allowed to get to it, and it's totally okay. And, uh, oh, pe people can hear me still, right? Still yeah, audible? we can hear you. I'm just doing a mic check. Okay, great. So those are two things that we would need in order to uh, create... That. So there are a few ways we can do this. We could make this publicly accessible. But what I'd rather do is I'd rather go create a, um, a CloudFront distribution, OK? Because that is the way that we should really serve our bucket. CloudFront is a CDN. And what it does is it takes a copy of your website and caches it uh, to a bunch of computers around the world so that when somebody, let's say in India, is downloading my Canadian website, it will serve up that HTML file to a computer that's nearby, if that makes sense. And, and once it got, uh, got error unable to locate credentials, if you're having issue with credentials, uh, you have to make sure your AWS credentials are correctly set in your uh, AWS CLI. You'll have to go back and watch a video and, and make sure your AWS credentials are set correctly. So now that we have our bucket set up, we want to set up the other compon component of it, right? So coming back over to our diagram, we have our bucket. We need 
in our or uh, our CloudFront distribution. And when we set this up, we'll hopefully set up our origin access controls and our bucket policy. Well, we don't want to make it public. We want to keep it private because the thing is, is that we can make it public, but we want everything to be forced through CloudFront as well, because CloudFront can also uh, attach additional security services like um, uh, AWS Firewall or whatever. And and that's just the, the way it's going to work. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go back over to AWS and we're going to type in uh, CloudFront. I go here and click CloudFront. I really wish I had a payday right now. It would just wake up my brain. And what I'm going to do here is create myself a new distribution. So I just want to know, uh, can I get a plus 210 if you are here on CloudFront and you're ready to create your distribution? So you, at the top, we type in CloudFront. Right there. And we should be here, ready to create a distribution. 210, please. Uh, and we, I want to repeat this. We do not need to make our, our, our bucket public because we're going to use cross account, uh, cross account controls. And yes, it is. It seems confusing, confusing because most people are very uh, used to opening up their, their bucket, but you don't have to do that this way. Okay. So let's go ahead and create and, our distribution. And to be clear, this this is the process that most people do in uh, professional organizations, in, in production level uh, websites and stuff, using CloudFront distribution or Akamai or something like that is the process for serving out web pages. Um, that's why this is a, a, a boot camp instead of just like a, uh, <laughs> a, a little demo. Yeah, because yeah. literally I did learn this method at work. Because, you know, the courses told me, you know, open up the bucket. And then through work, I learned you don't have to. You can do it this way with CloudFront. So um, so we are here to create a distribution. And um, I'm just going to tell you right now, I've only ever created a cross account, uh, a cross origin controls, that new, that origin, origin access controls. That's what's called origin access controls uh, using code. And so I'm not even sure where it is for, through ClickOps, but we'll figure it out together. The first thing we need to do is choose our origin domain. So if we drop this down, we have a few options. Now, sometimes they'll say point it to the S3 bucket, and sometimes they'll say point it to the static website hosting URL. Which one it is, I don't remember. So we'll figure it out as we go through here. And I'm going to, whoops, that's the wrong bucket, but I want to choose the correct bucket. So I'm going to just scroll on down and look for it and go and select your origin domain. Notice right away, it says, this S3 bucket has static web hosting enabled. If you plan to use the distribution as a website, we recommend using S3 website endpoint rather than the bucket endpoint. And this is very conditional based on your use case. I wish this had a little bit better description in terms of what use case you would use one over the other. Um, mm. But I think that we're supposed to actually keep it this way. Because I'm just I'm thinking about week one where I've gone ahead, and I'm almost certain that this is the address. But if it's not, I'm gonna just double check my code. I'm gonna go in the future. Have you seen the movie Back to the Future, uh, the second movie where they go actually to the future? That's what I'm doing right now. So I'm just gonna check my code. You don't have to do this. I'm just gonna check for us. Okay. Cue the music. And. Uh, Everyone's seen that movie, right? So they know the music, right? Um, and I'm just going to go check the code here really quickly and see. I'm going to guess figured. the youngins haven't seen that one, Andrew. OK, well, uh, that's your homework now is to go. Not the first movie, just the second one. You don't need to watch the first one. Your homework is now False. over the weekend. The first one's uh, the best one. Back to two. He, he just said, don't watch the first one. What? Don't watch it. Nope, nope, just the second one. What That's is the, the best matter one? With you? Oh my goodness. That's the best no, one. it is, it and, is uh, absolutely gonna, not I'm, the best one. You are I, broken. I'm going to put a quiz <laughs> in the platform. You're all going to have to do it. It's my boot camp, my rules. And uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go in here. I'm just looking for this is what happens when I'm like I'm low on food. I just get delusional and I do bizarre things. Um, so it looks like the origin here is, is oh, it actually is the website bucket domain name. So it actually is the domain name. So we'll go back here. I was totally wrong. 
and up here, and I'm going to actually use the website endpoint because that's what it wants. So make sure you press that button. It's using the static website hosting. It's not always the case. If you're using uh, origin access identities, the old one, it might want the S3 bucket or it will change the way you do it. One, three, two in order. That's probably a good order. Two is bad. It's bad, but it's good, right? <laughs> anyway, so let's scroll on down and we have our HP only. So we're gonna leave that to port 80. Um, because that's the protocol it's going to send over to that. We'll scroll on down here. It says origin path, enter the URL path to append to the origin domain name. We're gonna leave that blank because we don't need to change that. It has entered the name of this origin. We aren't going to change that. We'll keep going down. I know I'm going really fast, so I'll double check, make sure everyone's on, on point here. Advanced settings, we'll leave those alone. Um, HP and HPS is fine, but I probably would want to set to HPS only. We'll leave it alone. We'll leave this alone here. Restrict viewer access. If you restrict access, the viewer must use CloudFront sign URLs or cookies to access the content. No, we're going to leave that alone. We have caching policies. So cache policy, caching optimized. We're going to leave that alone. Am I ever going to change any of these options here? Uh, we'll leave these alone for now. I, I believe we do set these uh, later in the bootcamp. I'm going to go to additional settings. These look fine. This looks fine. This leave this alone. That's expensive. This is fine. We'll go over this twice. I realize there's a lot of options. Um, we're not using C names because we're not using custom domain names. We do that in the intermediate bootcamp. Um, custom SSL, no, that'd probably be expensive. Or we'd use it from um, one for our domain. So we'll leave that alone. Okay. We actually have something we can enter in. Default root object, index HTML. And I realize I'm going quick. We'll we'll go over this twice here. Um, yeah, I think that's that's it. So we'll go all the way back to the top. Okay. So yeah, all we did is we had that static website hosting here. And then we literally scrolled on down, down to the ground. And we put an index HTML in here. Now, there was one thing that I wanted to know is I wanted to know if it was going to use the SSL certificate for CloudFront. And I think actually in Terraform, we actually have to tell it explicitly. But here we don't. Um, I just want to tell you that when you use Terraform or when you use CloudFormation uh, or any IAC tool, just understand that the APIs are not always the same as the UIs. So sometimes the UI does like three, four things for you that you don't see. But when you do encoding, you actually have to know more about how the APIs work. And that's why I always encourage uh, people learning cloud to start looking at the API sooner so you have a better idea of what that is. But I think it's important to look at both the UI and the APIs and the CLIs and the code to understand and try to get a mapping of where things are different, if that makes sense. I know that's a big mess. Anyway, uh, one other thing I want to do is put a description in because I found out with CloudFront, they just really don't help you understand what these things are for. So I'm just going to go here and say uh, Terra House Example CDN. I want everyone to fill in a description here. And just tell me if you are, uh, give me a 250. Sorry, no, 300, 300. If you are down here and you're ready to uh, create your distribution. OK. And by the way, this takes a little bit of time to create. And that's the perfect opportunity to go take a break so I can go get a snack because I'm really hungry. <laughs> and I could barely think here. So if we got 300s, go ahead and create that distribution. Fingers crossed that this works. I just want to point out that these distributions do take a little bit of time. I think it takes five minutes at least for this to spin up. And okay. the other part of it is that if we make a mistake, it takes like five minutes to fix it. So let's really hope that this works. So I'm going to go ahead and create the distribution. Oh. And we got to just say, we don't want WAF. Say no to this, because this is an extra cost. And we'll go ahead and create that. And uh, I know this is unprecedented. Uh, uh, like, it's not a normal thing to do during streams, but I am going to go shove some food in my mouth and come back in two seconds. Uh, I'll be back in a few minutes. Chris and Shala, hold down the fort, OK? Will do. Sure, absolutely. Oh, look, we're still <laughs> deploying. Bum, ba, da, bum. This this is uh, straight up my work life right now. Right. <laughs> yep. So back back to what we were talking about before. 
Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the demos and a lot of the initial, this is, this is how you do the thing. It, they, they go, it's good from the perspective of, of getting your feet wet and getting exposed to the process. But when it comes to doing things in the real world, Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why I like how Andrew does his boot camps is because this this is how you're going to come across these things in the in the real world. Yes, um, getting getting your certifications in AWS or Terraform or whatever. Oh, who popped up a little? Is that is that Andrew doing that or is that Baco doing that? Maybe, but yeah, the the cute hamster cones. There's also a dancing banana. <laughs> I'm going to blame I like Baco. when they come. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, like, it's, uh, the, this process, uh, make, make it, creating an issue, pulling something from the code, making a branch, making recommendations, having a conversation in the issues. These are all of the auxiliary skills that folks need to pick up in order to become truly effective in, yep. in this world, in the world of DevOps, in the world of infrastructure as code, development, what, whatever you're going to get into, you're going to be talking to other people through PRs, through yeah. issues, through, um, through a lot of mechanisms that folks aren't usually used to. Mm -hmm. uh, just you're, you're not going to be sitting on somebody's shoulder watching them click around in the, in the AWS console. Nope. Uh, the cool part... The other cool part what I really appreciate about Andrew's boot camp is like he's <laughs> he did them at the time where I was still new to cloud, yeah. right? And so yeah. I can 1000% be like, yes, these boot camps legit feels like, you know, what work was feeling like for me when I first got started. So that's the cool part. Um yep. Because to your point, you can sit there and you can do the courses and you learn how to do the things. That's great and all. But when you start working real world, it just, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> because you don't get like these ideal cases. You know, when a client comes to you, you get stuff that, um, you know, gets asked where you have to go figure it out. And you'll have people that have been working in cloud for 10 plus years and they're like, oh, I don't know how to do that thing they want us to do either. And so you have to go figure it out. <laughs> yep, exactly. That was fast, Andrew. Are you are you back and fed already? <laughs> yep, I'm that quick. Wow. What was yeah. it? Was it a payday bar? Was it a bowl of oats? What'd you get this time? Double dog. <laughs> What's, what is that? You, What's that? It's like when you eat two hot dogs at the same time, you dip them in your water and then you just... Have you have you seen that King of the Hill episode where they have that uh, like the speed eating? Yes. What am I, what with am I gonna Bobby. do with you, Andrew? What did you what did you do to yourself? Next <laughs> conference, I'll show I'll show you my speed speed eating techniques. <laughs> I'm telling you, we uh, are still waiting for the Andrew channel, like just just Andrew being Andrew, like off the grid, all those things. We'll, Are, we'll see. Was was it maple syrup or water that you dipped your hot dogs into? Oh, we're out we're out of the maple. It was just water. Oh, wait, you're Canadian. How could you be out of maple syrup? That's like, don't you don't you get arrested for if you run out of maple syrup? <laughs> it's just there's a bit of a shortage right now, so we're just waiting for the local <laughs> place. They get it from um, from Sault Ste. Marie, which is a really uh, they make really good maple syrup around there, but. There is um, outrage ac across the YouTube sphere right now. Out of maple? What? Well, they'll have some in a few days, but um, yeah, when the town, when maple syrup comes in, the town just buys it up. But um, anyway, so, and I'm serious, we really do go through a lot of maple syrup. Um, That's funny. Anyway, so if, if I want folks to go back and click on their distribution and then scroll to the right. You can see that note comes in handy here because the rest is really not helpful in terms of information. So make sure that you can see your description and then scroll all to the right and tell me if the status is enabled. Oh, sorry. Can you give me a plus 500 <laughs> if you're there? I didn't, I didn't indicate as to, as to what I need to know. Plus 500 if you have status enabled and your distribution's ready. So sorry about that. Anyway, so now the question is, will this work? 
if we click into our distribution, we get a custom domain name. So this is a different domain name from the one that the S3 bucket generated. And the idea is that we're hoping that when we use this domain name, it's going to point to the S3 bucket and work. And it may not work. And I have an idea if it doesn't. But let's go and see if it works. So I'm going to copy it, bring it back up here. By the way, I'm just going to tell Gitpod I'm still running. So I'm just going to click, 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 click so it doesn't forget. And we still have a 403. Oh, no. Why do we still have a 403? What could it be? Oh, no. Um, the reason we still have a 403. Oh, sorry. Chris, do you do you might have an idea why? No, 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 no. Please, please. I'm I'm adding a, a, a verbal background. I'm, I'm I'm your backup singer. I'm like, oh no. Okay. Um, the the reason we have a 403 is that we probably don't have a bucket policy. So coming back to our diagram, uh, here wherever it is, it's somewhere here. Nope. There we go. We're supposed to have an origin access controls and a bucket policy. We need those two things um, in order for it to work. And uh, we didn't exactly configure one. We didn't see those options when we were doing that. But what we'll do is we will go back over to CloudFront and we'll explore around. So we have origins. And so we have an origin here. What this is, I don't know. Is this an origin access identity and or uh, origin access control? Over here, there's something that says this, origin access. So I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to click into this. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit. I don't want to save this because if we do, it takes forever for this to update. But I want to carefully check here and see if there's any indicator. So yeah, here's the thing is that there are two different things, origin access identities and origin access controls. But from the UI, we can't even tell which is which. There's, there's really no way of knowing. And so... This is where I talk about how important it is to know the API. We can check behavior. Maybe the, the behavior will tell us something. I'm going to edit this. OK, so we have cache policy and orange request policy. And there's legacy cache. So I almost wonder if maybe uh, this might be the distinction between whether it's access controls and that. Because one says legacy and one says new. We know that origin access controls is a newer feature. so. Maybe that's what it is, but I don't think so. So the only way we're going to know if we have an origin access identity and or origin access control is to use the CLI. So I'm going to go back over to here to AWS uh, CLI. I'm going to drag that over. And let's see if we can just list those out. I'm going to type in AWS and hit Enter. And the window is too small, so I'll make it bigger for it. And uh, this is for CloudFront. So I'm going to type in CloudFront. And by the way, you know, if you don't do this part, um, it's OK. I'm just trying to verify for all of us what we are using. And so we have AWS CloudFront. And I believe it is get uh, origin access control. Oh, you know what? I want to list them. Say list. If you're wondering if there's like a rhyme and reason to how these are named. There's not. Each service has different names. <laughs> There's some, some of them are the same, but they're not. So if you're wondering like, oh, is it always list? No. Is it always get? No. But it's just the nature of how it was built. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and see what we get. And it looks like it's returning something back for us. And we're getting an origin access control. This is for assets. That's not what we want. This is a bit hard to read. So I'm going to try in another format. I'm going to go and try this again. I'm going to say CloudFront origin access or... List, list origin access controls. And I'm going to try output table, see if that is a bit more clear. Again, don't worry about doing this yourself. Um, and so it's only showing one. You might not see any, but this is the only one it's showing for. This one has origin access controls. So it makes me think that we're using origin access identities, which if it is, that's a bummer. I'm going to go ahead and type an enter here. And we'll say CloudFront. So we want to list the other one. It's list. I don't know if it is. But I'm going to guess. List origin access identities. Look at this one. This one's list CloudFront origin access identity. So CloudFront and then list CloudFront. You have to understand that there's somebody on their team that they just don't care about naming. And they just go, ah, it's good enough. Yeah, close enough. Close enough. But we live with it. It's all right. So we'll hit enter. 
and it didn't show any. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. So now my question is, how do we create an origin access control via the CLI? And you know what? This isn't something we can ask AWS or uh, ChatGPT because ChatGPT doesn't know about this feature because its knowledge is from 2021 and this feature is from 2022. So if, if people are like wondering, can we use ChatGPT for that? Nope. It's totally okay if we're, we go bust here because in the bootcamp, we will solve it. But I'm just curious. I want to try to apply some troubleshooting, figure out how can we get an origin access control if we're doing click ops. So what I'll do is I'll just say origin access controls and we'll look at AWS because they probably have a blog post. Every time they launch a new feature, there's a blog post and they usually use click ops to show you how to do it there, right? Oh, oh so some, some are saying there's the web request feature that you can use to go to the internet. I'm very curious about that. I haven't used it. If anyone's had any experience with that, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, other people are saying plugins. I've never tried it. Where is it? How do you do plugins? I don't even know. Uh, is this a, nope. Nope. How do you do plugins in chat GPT? Doesn't NATO support plugins? Okay. Well, there's some way to do it, but I sure don't know how. But we'll go to the blog post. So you can see this is in August 2022. And the data in ChatGPT is 2021. Maybe there's a way we can do that. We have origin access controls, our OAC. And all I'm looking for is how do I create it? So when using OAC, uh, CloudFront Edge locations receive the request, et cetera, et cetera. So next we'll talk about OAC. So I just want to see how I create one. Um, create control setting. So there's something called a create control setting. So I'm going to go back over here. And again, this I've never done this before in the UI. And maybe it's here on the left-hand side in CloudFront. I'm just trying to guess where it is. And as a cloud engineer, you always have to figure out where things are. Uh, I would use BARD, but BARD does not work in Canada. We don't have access to it for some weird reason. At least not yet. So um, it was called control access settings. Let's go over here and try origin access and take a look. Oh, look here, control settings and identities. So it's actually separate from it. That's interesting. I never knew that. So now we know where it is. And uh, we'll go ahead and create a control setting. So boot campers, what I want you to do is go over to origin access in CloudFront, right? And Click on this and tell me when you're here. Get, uh, let's reset the counter. We're going to do high with numbers here. Give me a plus one <laughs> if you are on the create control setting. Give me a negative one if you are really, really lost. Will this be accessible after the live stream? Yep, it will be up on YouTube uh, in the recording. If you are in the learning platform, if you're registered, you'll have access to, uh, to it there as well. Plus one's okay. We're in good shape here. So we'll need to create a new uh, control access. I'm going to call this one Terra Town, Terra House. Well, hold on. It says valid characters, letters, numbers, most special characters. Let's just say Terra House example. Terra House example. Well, we don't need the description. We'll go down below. We say do not sign requests, sign requests. We definitely want to sign requests. We have an origin type of S3, so that sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and create that. So I've now created our uh, origin access control. We'll go back over here. And we've done that. I'm just looking for screenshots. So how do we actually attach that to our, our, our cloud for, or our cloud for distribution? In our distribution, it looks like when we create our distribution, we can do that. Over here, origin access. I didn't even notice that when we were doing that. So I guess that's an option. I wonder if when we created it, we could have created it all on the spot. I bet we could have, eh? But wherever that was, I, I didn't notice it. So what we'll do is we'll go back over to our distribution at the top and we'll click into this one and we'll go to behaviors and we'll edit our behavior because that's where it looked like it was under. 
Okay. Can we change that after the fact? I don't think we can. Let's go back to that. Where was that? Here. Create distribution. In origin configuration, in the origin dropdown list, you can optionally configure origin path to append the origin domain name. I don't know if we can change that retroactively. You should sign the request. The reason you want the request signed is that is what's going to allow it to get access to the, the, the private bucket because they're signed. At least that's, that's the way I understand it. Um, when, when I uh, actually update my certification courses, I'll sound a lot smarter because I'll have a, more documentation pulled up at the time. But um, which one is the signing behavior? Oh yeah, sorry. So it's just that checkbox there. So yeah, I don't know if we can retroactively change that because it goes here origins, creates the origin. Uh, maybe we could edit the origin because it's under those options. So I'm going to go back there and take a look. And we'll go here. I know I'm all over the place, but we'll figure it out. We'll go to edit. Uh, no, okay. So I think, this is my guess, but I think that if you want origin access controls, you have to actually create it. You have to create the uh, control setting first and then create the distribution. Or I'm just gonna check this really quickly. You don't have to do this. I'm just gonna do this very quickly. Is there is probably an option under the origin here. I was actually surprised I didn't see an origin option. Oh, it's up here, right? Additional settings? No. If we go to the bucket here, here. Ah, oh, look, see, it's right here. Is it because we chose this? So notice we have this option now. If we go bucket, that option vanished. Mm. That's why we didn't see it. Ah, but you know, this is really like a really good example of what it's like writing the cloud. You ought, especially with AWS, you'll find that you're doing something and you'll find you need this other thing and you have to create it first before you do that. You have to undo your work. That's like me, eight of us all the time. So yeah, I guess we were, even though it, it's supposed to use the domain name, you're not supposed to use it there. So what we should have done is we should have done this. And then we would have had those fly for us. We would have chose the bucket. And then I bet it would work. So we do have a bit of time here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this distribution. I know this takes forever, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to delete it. Or sorry, disable it first. And by the way, now I'm kind of just speeding through it because we're, we're really low on time. So I'm just going to speed through it. And just try to keep up the best you can. Again, this, this is recorded, so we can look at it again. So this has to disable. It will take time to disable. While we're waiting for this one to disable, I'm going to create a new distribution. I'm going to go and choose that, uh, that S3 address. I'm going to ignore that option. I'm going to go here instead. I'm going to drop down this. I'm going to go to here. I'm going to scroll on down. I'm going to say no to that. I'm going to um, leave all this alone. I'm going to set this to index HTML. And I'm going to say Terra House example two. I create the distribution. I know that was fast. I'm not expecting people to follow along at this point. If you can keep up with me, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a maniac, uh, please do so. Uh, it's not important for you to finish this stuff. It's just important for us to experience this. This is what I want you to do, experience these issues or troubleshooting through the stuff and understand how to find things naturally and things like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create distribution. And um, says so complete Graham, distribution Graham configuration Davies. by allowing, oh, Chris? Yeah, um, so Graham Davies says you can also do this retrospectively via edit behavior and create origin request policy. Okay. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, complete the distribution configuration by allowing read access to CloudFront. So that's the last part of it was that even though we created the distribution with the access control policy, we still have to have this bucket 
bucket policy. And that is this last part here. Uh, if we go back to this one, where did you go? Where's my diagram? Here it is. Is we need that part there automatically. So what we need to do is we need to copy it. So I'm going to copy that policy. And I'm going to go to my S3 bucket permissions right here. Okay. And I'm going to go down here. I'm going to edit the bucket policy. I'm going to dance. We'll paste that in there. So it should have the bucket policy. And by the way, we spend more time in the videos at all, uh, looking at this bucket policy. So I know I'm just glancing over it. And we say that. And I'm going to go back over to CloudFront. And I'm going to look at that example. And we'll just wait for that to deploy. And so maybe it will work and we'll all be in good shape. The old one is still disabling. Notice that takes a long time to do. It really doesn't matter if we don't delete these things uh, because we're not going to use the same name for the uh, for the bucket name. Um, and these things don't cost anything. But I will make a cleanup video to show you how to manually delete these because I'll have to make an extra video here. But just notice that it takes forever to disable, forever. To, well, actually, once it's disabled, delete is instant. Um, but for whatever reason, it just takes a long time. So we'll just be hanging out here. So yeah. Um, I want to point out that uh, we will have office hours, or sorry, after class Q&A after this. So that will be appearing, uh, or we'll be doing that right after, uh, so I'm trying to get those off the screen, right after this. So after class Q&A, as you know, is our Discord uh, chat. Um, so that will be for 30 minutes. I think we'll start that exactly, uh, do you want to do it at 2.30 or 2, folks? Do we all need a mental break after this? Let's start at 2.30 so that you can get some food in you, take a nice little break, uh, not okay. just wolf down a couple of maple-covered hot dogs. Right. And we'll give this a nice refresh here. Yeah, I'm just really curious to see if this is going to work out. But of course, hmm. we have to wait around for five minutes. Seems to work for me now. Nice. Sugarless oats. And that's usually what I eat every morning is I just have like plain oats. That's all I eat. That's what I had this morning. Or maple covered hot dogs. One of the two. Or maple covered hot dogs. The, if you eat really clean in the morning, you can have the dirtiest lunch you want. Right. Sure. What? And... Uh, so the old one is disabled, so I can go ahead and delete the old one. We will check this new one. I'm going to check the domain. Fingers crossed that it works. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the most impressive part of this is the fact that the S3 bucket is still blocking all access. That, that's the cool mm -hmm. thing. At least to me, anyway. I don't, I don't know if anyone else thinks this is cool, but... Um, but yeah, so that's all I wanted to accomplish in today's video. Uh, again, it doesn't matter if you complete this part here. It, I just wanted you to experience this process and to see where we would uh, struggle. And we had some struggle, which is great. Um, I'm going to just start cleaning this up. So the way we clean this up, you just saw that we, we did that before, how we deleted that. So we'll go ahead and disable this one. I think that we can't delete the bucket until, well, first we got to empty the bucket. Right. But the other part of it is that um, I, I don't know if it will let us delete the bucket if the, the distribution's pointing to it. And we'll find that out here in just a moment. So we'll go ahead and empty the bucket. Okay, and I'm going to go and see if I can delete the bucket now. Yeah.
and say the real Andrew. Here we go. There is no changes to push. We were just simply doing that um, uh, for demonstration. Like we just wanted to create those files so that we had something to push to the bucket. But everything in Git pod, we can go ahead. We can shut down our Git pod now. So I'm going to stop my workspace. I'm not going to save any of those changes. I don't want to keep any of that. And we'll make our way back over to here. And I'm going to see if it'll let me delete this bucket. Oh, it did. Oh. So it used to I didn't know that, you but you can that. delete. Interesting. That's very interesting, right? Unless this one was done. Because it is disabling. Maybe it knows it's in a disabled flag. But um, yeah, I would have not mm, thought okay. you'd been able to do that. But also, it's it's pointing at, maybe if it's pointing at the domain name, um, it doesn't resolve the domain name. And so it, it's not checking the S3 bucket, right? So what if, I know that we set it as S3 bucket, but because we're using it cross origin access, uh, origin access control, and when we look in the Terraform code, it actually uses the domain name. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like it might be a discrepancy between the UI and what's actually happening. So these are the kind of thoughts that we're always having about cloud resources, where you're like, I think that this is what's happening. And sometimes you don't never find out the answer and you just have to make a mental model of your head of what actually does work. And then if you ever get to talk to someone at AWS or you have support or you get to talk to the person that built it, then they actually explain the logic behind it. Um, and also things, things change. Like Chris said, I thought that you couldn't do that before. And this happens all the time. So you know, just understand that you have to always double, triple, quadruple check things. And you just get kind of used to it after a while. But um, anyway, hopefully that was all good. Um, it looks like my stuff will be cleaned up here uh, shortly here. Um, but we're pretty much wrapped up here. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Chris or Shala? So um, now that we've done this manually uh, throughout mm -hmm. the, the course of the rest of the week, what we're going to do is terraformize this and uh, get this into an, into some uh, TF mains, right? That's correct. Is that... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, I'm sorry. No, no. Please go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say I could show we could take a look at what it's going to kind of look like to get an idea of how complex that code is. Nice. Just kind of a sneak peek. So over here, I'm just going to jump over to I think 1.8.2 is the latest. So the week that's coming up here, week one, we're going to end up uh, writing some code in our main TF file. We're going to create ourselves our own module, which sounds scary, but it's not as bad as you think. Excitement. Nice. Yeah, we'll create our own module. And so in that main TF, uh, it'll look a bit empty, but we will set up our CloudFront. So everything that we just did, we're going to set up a cross cool. access origin control, set up a di distribution. Looks scary, but it's not. We're going to check for invalidations. We're going to set up that S3 bucket. And so hopefully people are really, really excited for this week because this week is going to really be the challenge week. It's going to be very, yeah. uh, I think it's probably the hardest week will be probably week one. Um, but this is where you'll learn all your core Terraform knowledge. So hopefully everyone is excited for that. It's going to be that. awesome. Nice. But, so, but um, yeah, so I think we can break a little bit early here. At 2.30, we will all reconvene in the after class Q&A. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if you get a chance, try to eat something before you come to the uh, <laughs> after class Q&A. <laughs> okay. Awesome. <laughs> all right. We'll all see you cool. soon. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. This is great. Ciao, ciao.